Algebra 2, 1.11. I'm going to talk about how to draw a diagram for word problems to help us. One of the strategies we can use to solve a word problem is to draw a diagram. Using a combination of strategies may even be the best way to go. So we can write an equation, make an organized list, use logical reasoning, make a table. We could simplify the problem, or we could try, test, revise our try. So it's like guess and test, and then revise our guess. We can look for a pattern, we can work backwards, or we can try drawing a diagram. Or we could use a combination of these. And drawing a diagram is going to help us visualize the information given, and it can help us write our equation. We have to read the problem, we can assign a variable, we can write the equation, solve it, and check it. So here's our first one. The average rainfall in April for Honolulu, Hawaii is 0.6 inches. This is approximately 20% of the rainfall for Waimanalo, Hawaii, in April. So approximately how much rain falls in April in Waimanalo? So we're going to let W equal Waimanalo. Doesn't that make sense? And we know that Honolulu is 0.6, which is 20%. So what we can do is just draw a little bar and show that Honolulu is 20%. That's 20 parts of 100, 2 tenths, or 1 fifth, right? So we could break it into fifths and say that that's Honolulu at 0.6. We could even draw raindrops. We can draw 10 raindrops and circle two of them to represent the 20% as 0.6. We can add up the 0.6s, couldn't we? Well, 0.6 is 20%, so we can multiply this 0.2 or we could say it's 20, right, either way. But if we take the 0 away, it's going to make our math easier, isn't it? Because 20 point two zero and point two is the same thing. I'm going to multiply point two w and it's going to equal point 0.6. So to isolate y, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this coefficient. So this is our variable w. This is its coefficient, point 0.2. And we can multiply both sides of the equation by its reciprocal 1 over 2 as a half. And we get 2 over 2. That makes our buddy 1, the identity property, right, that is invisible. So now we have W equals 3. So we know it's 3 inches. So Y.E. Manalo gets approximately 3 inches of rain in April, where Honolulu gets 0.6 inches. See? We also could have used division. We don't have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, unless that's what the teacher wants on the test for you to show your work. But we can also solve it very quickly by dividing both sides by 0.2. That's going to create a 1, and 0.6 divided by 0.2 is 3. See? Same thing. I prefer this way. So, check this one out. If eight equivalent right triangles form a square and the perimeter of the square equals 32 inches, what is the length of one leg of one triangle? So it sounds really confusing until we draw a diagram or a picture. So it's going to make a square. So start by drawing a square first and then figure out by practicing how to make eight triangles that are right triangles. See? So here's 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, if the perimeter is 32 inches all the way around and it's a square, that means each side is equal, right? Because it's a square. And 8 inches would be 32 inches divided by that four sides. So now we know each side is 8 inches. And if a triangle has two legs, then that means there's going to be four inch legs. So we know the answer is four inches. See? Drawing the diagram can help us. How about this one? Emma can hang wallpaper on a 10 foot by 10 foot wall in 40 minutes. How long will it take her to wallpaper a section that measures five feet by five feet? So if the wall is 10 feet by 10 feet, again, it's a perfect square and it's 10 feet every on each side. And if we have a section that's 5 feet by 5 feet, that's half of this length and half of that length. So we're going to end up making four equal squares inside of this square. Well, we can solve this problem just by looking at the drawing. If we think about it, if this whole thing takes 40 minutes, 
how much would one-fourth of it take? And by drawing the picture, we can easily see that the wall is divided into four sections, each five by five. So the wall to wallpaper one-fourth of the wall is going to take one-fourth of the time. And 40 times one-fourth equals 40 divided by four, or 10 minutes. We could even say 40 minutes divided by four sections equals 10 minutes. See? It helps us visualize it, doesn't it? Okay, here's another one. Ballast water is water that is carried in ship's ballast tanks to improve the st stability and balance of the ship. And it's taken up or discharged when cargo or passengers are loaded or unloaded, or when the ship needs extra stability in bad weather. So just to show you, here's a picture, and the ballast tanks sit at the bottom where this pink is, okay? So here it's full of seawater, and here it's empty, because the cargo tank is full, so the ballast is empty. When they drop the cargo off, they fill it with ballast, and that keeps the ship stable, see? And you might have even seen ships letting the water out. You'll see it streaming out the sides of the ship. They're letting the ballast water out. See that? So if an oil tanker can carry up to 20 million, million gallons of ballast water, if a freighter carries 0.35 of the ballast that an oil tanker can carry, how many gallons of water can the freighter carry? So we think, all right, well, 0.35 is approximately 0.33, a third, right? So that means a freighter can carry about this much compared to an oil tanker carrying this whole thing, all right? So because 20 million gallons of water is so large, we can even use scientific notation. We need to multiply 20 million times 0.35. Well, we can do 2.0 times 10 to the seventh power. See, we move the decimal point seven spaces right behind the two. And we can multiply the 0.35 times 2 and get 0 0.70. If we convert that to scientific notation, we have to put the decimal point behind the 7, right? So that's going to take away one of these exponents. So we're going to have 7 times 10 to the 6 power. And if we write this in standard notation, we'll see that it's 7 million gallons. See? So we know the freighter can carry 7 million gallons. So is 7 approximately a third of 20? Yeah, because 7 times 3 is 21, so it's about a third. And that's what we needed was about a third. So by drawing a picture or going on the Internet to look at a picture so that we even know what ballast is can help us. And it won't help us write the equation, but it'll help us make sure that our answer is reasonable. Right? So drawing a picture won't always help us write the equation. Sometimes it'll just help us visualize the problem. Or sometimes it might actually help us write the equation, all right? So our next video is going into Chapter 2, and we're going to talk about equations and inequalities. And the first one is about clearing fractions or decimals from equations, all right? I know we covered that in Algebra 1, but that was a while ago, so let's go over that again. Sorry about the glare on my board. It's kind of a beautiful day outside. All right, I'll see you next video. Keep trying. Keep up the good work. Bye.